Bull or bear? I'm spending a 1987 U.S. Constitutional $1 proof coin. Well, it's impaired proof now. And she comes up a bear. Good evening. Hey, what's up, folks? This is Brian Kuzma with Commercial Rare Coin. I know I said evening. I'd rather had said morning, but man, it was just so busy today. Uh, so it's a good evening for you. Got the uh, live uh, Robbie's uh, 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 Marina cam up right here. You can see all the tarpon down there swimming around, getting fed by the tourists. There's a young man. <laughs> Dad, th <laughs> Dad thought he was going to get uh, eaten there, wanted to hang on to him, make sure he didn't get in. Uh, fall in the water. It would have been a good YouTube video, though, <clears throat> for sure. Uh, but I got the, uh, all the snook down, not snook, all the tarpon down there, some biggies. And it um, looks like a beautiful but rainy evening uh, down there as well. <clears throat> We've had nothing but rain here all day long. Um, man, I'd rather be out fishing, too. Those boats remind me how much I'd rather be out fishing. And I guess you feel the same way. <clears throat> Who wants to sit at home and listen to me all day? I don't. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, quote of the day, a major development last week was the uh, large amount of gold issued by J.P. Morgan over the first two days of the comics April contract. Uh, I think we uh, delved into this last week's video, last uh, Friday's video. Uh, I just kind of wanted to uh, remind you folks why gold is down, okay? Uh, total gold deliveries by J.P. Morgan of 14,326 contracts includes 10,682 contracts, 1.07 million ounces, excuse me, uh, by JPM from its proprietary house account were the largest in JPM history. <clears throat> uh, this is big news because it demonstrates a clear and blatant price manipulation by JP Morgan with more than 19,000 contracts of gold standing for delivery. What would have been the price of gold had JPM not delivered more 10,000 contracts from its house account? I know I'm being repetitive, folks, but I can't stress enough that, and for you silver guys, you know, saying, well, here, let me skip to the silver part here. Where gold goes, silver will follow. Silver is a highly manipulated market, but, you know, it has to ultimately be dragged up by gold at some point, even if its ratio is close to 101. Uh, but I digress here. Uh, gold got monkey hammered again this week. We knew we were going to see sub. I was pretty sure we were going to see it on uh, uh, Sunday night opening. I think which we did, or or, or this morning when we absolutely seen it. Uh, uh, sub two thousand dollar gold. <clears throat> and we all kind of expected this pullback. Uh, but if you want the reason why it happened, it had nothing to do with anybody cashing in on the price of gold. The people saying, oh my God, finally 2000 is never going to get there again, we're going to sell it. No, that's not what happened. What happened is JPM again smashed this rally that we we're going into the 2000 above uh, prices. Um, and again, it's pure, blatant, in your face manipulation. Why they are not in prison, I don't know, but a lot of people feel they're not, you know, that they're an, that they're an instrument for the U.S. government. They're the instru an instrument for the uh, uh, Plunge Protection Team. I'm, I'm in that camp. I, I think I'm really in the camp that I believe that uh, J.P. Uh, Morgan is a arm, a proxy uh, of uh, uh, the U.S. government, the Treasury Department, the uh, Plunge Protection Team, and, and, and keeping commodities in control. And, and, conjunction with the CME group. If I'm, sh I may be incorrect, but doesn't somebody from the CME group also sit in the plunge protection team? Uh, I could be wrong on that, but uh, uh, no less what we have in sub $2,000 gold has nothing to do with capitulation by gold buyers or by people that uh, own gold, believe in gold. It has everything to do with JP Morgan in there again, uh, uh, illegally manipulating these markets by doing this. It's so blatant and, and, and Ted Butler points this out. A lot of other people are pointing this out. And, it, and you, you have to ask yourself, <clears throat> you know, th they can't be that stupid, can they, that they would just blatantly do it over and over and over again? Uh, well, I don't know. you got to ask. <laughs> Anyways, uh, where, where was my other quote for the day I thought was pretty cool? The whole government is a Ponzi scheme. This is Bernie Bernard Madoff. We'll call him Bernard Madoff. Um, and um, here, listen, here's the grand master of Ponzi schemes calling it really like it is. The whole government is a Ponzi scheme. Bernie Madoff was spot on the money with that uh, because, again, I believe that the, the, this manipulation, clear manipulation of uh, gold prices by J.P. Morgan is nothing more than uh, uh, them being a proxy for the uh, plunge protection team, the Fed, uh, somebody to knock the price of gold down, whether, whether the reason being that uh, they want to uh, keep the illusion of dollar strength up and the illusion of uh, gold weakness uh, up as well. 
Uh, yeah, you'd rather stay in dollars than you would gold because who needs the whole world kind of flush? Well, not the whole world, but who needs uh, the American public jumping into gold when there's such a small amount of them that own gold and a large amount that own dollars? So maybe it's just another way for the government to keep people out of uh, gold and keep them in dollars. Maybe it's just a uh, maybe this is just a uh, political. Uh, war that's happening right now. Not a political war, but this is a war that's happening with the BRICS nations. Maybe the the, uh, uh, the Federal Reserve, uh, the Treasury Department, <clears throat> who's ever in the uh, plunge protection team, uh, 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 maybe maybe they're, they're looking at the BRICS nations and saying, well, the BRICS nations are, are really backing up their money or may back up their money with gold. They're all heavy buyers of gold. Uh, maybe we should just try to knock the price of gold down or keep prices of gold low enough to uh, uh, discourage people to get into gold, you know, and, and may, maybe it is a, a part of this whole war against the BRICS nations. Uh, I don't know. I tend to think probably not. I tend to think it, it is what Alan Greenspan said a long time ago that, uh, uh, that the uh, Treasury uh, or the uh, Federal Reserve uh, uh, use gold as a canary in the gold mine. You know, when gold st prices started going up dramatically, it meant there was something wrong with the dollar. It was kind of a shift out of the dollar and into gold, uh, which, uh, e you know, again, even uh, uh, Greenspan acknowledged. I forget what, you, you can find his quote talking about gold uh, kind of being in the canary in the uh, gold mine. Um, it's, uh, it's not phrased exactly like that, but uh, uh, he did talk about that. And maybe that's what we're really seeing is uh, just that the uh, uh, plunge protection team and the uh, uh, the Ponzi uh, uh, scheme, the people that run the Ponzi scheme in the government just want to keep the price of gold down for whatever nefarious reasons they may have, uh, whether it's uh, a dollar strength or whether it's, uh, well, actually, you know, <clears throat> creating problems with BRICS nations by uh, keeping the price of low, uh, gold low is, is also about dollar strength as well. So maybe it really is all about dollar strength. And, uh, <laughs> all right, let's get into today's markets, sub $2,000 currently. Yeah, that's kind of what we saw. I think I saw a low of, uh, there it is, 1988. That was this morning uh, in this morning's markets, so actually uh, 1981. Uh, and there's 2008 in the overnight markets. But today in the New York markets, I think uh, we're sitting at 1988 to uh, what we're looking at, 1991. Just a little bit below the uh, $2,000 mark. Let's see what happens tomorrow. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll move back to that 1970 mark a little bit. Maybe we'll see a lower of 1950. But believe me, folks, it's not organic. And the fact that gold... Uh, uh, J, not Goldman, but uh, J.P. Morgan had to uh, uh, put such a large amount of gold into the market, uh, uh, 19,000 contracts uh, to knock this market down, and still it's just barely below 2,000 tells me that this gold market probably has a lot of legs left in it, and uh, we're going to see higher prices before long. Uh, and, and remember, they have just as much silver. They can knock that silver price down too. You got to ask yourself why though. They're so set up. Goldman, I mean, uh, J.P. Morgan. Uh, why would they want to just do this blatant manipulation <clears throat> unless they were asked to do it? That's what kind of blows my mind. Uh, because first off, you know, they're, they're facing pot potential convictions by the government for uh, their their involvement in knocking uh, gold and silver down in 2011. You know, when silver was almost 50 bucks an ounce, gold was sailing up to 2100 or or 22,000 and something like that. Uh, to its uh, second all-time high, uh, and J.P. Morgan and their big collusive commercials came in and smashed it back down, uh, substantially down, gold down almost to that uh, uh, $1,200, $1,100 mark after, you know, 2013, 14, 15, uh, and silver, you know, as low as, what, almost 12, 13 bucks at some point. Uh, that was J.P., and they got caught. They got caught. Nobody like, you know, nope, nobody. None of the big corporate uh, uh, media talks about that because they're fucking morons and they work for the... Uh, uh, these idiots, uh, you know, advertising and all that stuff, and most of them. <laughs> but anyways, I digress again. Uh, um, J.P. Morgan's already been caught doing this. I just can't understand why they would so blatantly knock the price of gold down this week unless they had some kind of immunity, some kind of immunity not to be charged for the conspiracy of what they did this last week in knocking prices down uh, that much uh, by unleashing that many contracts. Again, the only thing, reason, I believe that JP won't go to jail for this is because they did it at the behest of the government. They did it at the behest of the uh, plunge protection team or, uh, hmm, here, let me see if I can reduce that a little bit here. I'm pretty, <laughs> keep pressing buttons there. Sorry to confuse you. Uh, so it just befuddles me, uh, but no less, 
Uh, with the 19,000 contracts, the amount of gold JP had to throw in, half their freaking gold uh, to knock this market down below 2,000, and they just barely did that, tells me, again, this gold market has a lot of legs left in it. At least uh, you will see some temporary lows, but I don't think it's going to last that long. As far as silver goes, uh, <clears throat> same thing. Uh, it has not been smashed much below that 25 mark. Ted Butler talked in his recent newsletter this, uh, that the uh, big four commercials, for the first time, uh, the, uh, the big commercial shorts, the, the, the big four, have not added to the short position here, which is kind of interesting. Um, and, and considering, I think that gold probably got whacked a little bit more than silver. Uh, silver's showing good strength. We're still that near that $25 mark. Uh, so uh, tough to say what's going on out there, man. These, bo these markets are showing good legs uh, in a really crooked marketplace. I mean, uh, <laughs> When I say good legs in the crooked marketplace, these are both great products. Gold, silver, and platinum are great products. They're, 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 they're the stellar, perfect uh, uh, sportsmen out there uh, uh, competing in a rigged competition. And that's the best way I can describe it. So uh, the, these champions, gold, silver, and platinum, uh, you know, they're, they're in a rigged system. That's why these prices are so low. But I think this rig system is starting to fall apart. This is why we're seeing the upside here. And I don't think it has anything to do with these pipe people being, uh, 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 you know, insidious for the most part. Uh, when it comes to these big commercial banks, I think they've gotten away with it so long. I think the CME group knows this. I think the CFTC know, knows this. Um, um, that uh, uh, they, they just view it as a normal way of doing business, perhaps. I don't know. Uh, but no less, a lot of hanky-panky going on with J.P. Morgan. Uh, and again, I, I really, really am starting to believe they're in, are in bed with the Treasury Department and the uh, Plunge Protection Team. Uh, Peter Hombro makes a, a good article here on GATA.org, talks about he who has the gold makes the rules and uh, uh, talks about the same thing here. I'm going to click on this link, which kind of takes us to uh, Peter Hombro's link. I'm going to accept all cookies there because, hey, who gives a shit? And I like cookies. <laughs> cookies and coffee, cookies and, okay. All right, uh, give me one second here. My throat's getting dry. Uh, just got over a nasty fucking, excuse me. Uh, boy, I'm throwing out the F word tonight. Nasty uh, 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 head cold this week. Not even a head cold, like a sinus infection thing. Lasted for about three days and then just completely went away. Kind of recovered this morning here. Uh, he who makes the gold makes the rules. And uh, let me blow that up because uh, I'm getting old. Straws in the wind presage the oncoming storm and not everyone noticed in time. One such straw has appeared in the gold market and only the most beady-eyed of your readers will have noticed that J.P. Morgan Chase did not, as is usual, roll over its maturing derivatives position in gold. Instead, it delivered physical gold into the standings, those standing for delivery. Um, you know, so, folks, some of this is like Greek. You know, if you're not familiar with how uh, the futures and the uh, uh, the futures markets works, derivative markets work, the CME groups markets work, uh, and I, I'll admit, man, it, sometimes it just confuses the hell out of me. You know, that's why I rely on people like Ted Butler and GATA.org and others uh, to figure out the reports and what's really going on out there. But uh, uh, here, follow through with me. Um, instead, it delivered physical gold to the those standing for delivery. Uh, gold expert Ted Butler, also silver expert extraordinaire, on SilverSeek.com writes, a major development last week it was the large amount of gold issued uh, by J.P. Morgan. Again, we just talked about that, the number of contracts, 1.07 million ounces that Ted talks about, uh, that, that, that was thrown into the open market for no other reason than to drop the prices, all right? Uh, and uh, they say here, and again, we were just talking about this, this is big news because it demonstrates clear and blatant price manipulation by J.P. Morgan. Yes, it does. And again, I ask myself, why would they do this? Why would they risk possible criminal uh, prosecution, which is, was left on the table in 2016 for more, unless they were asked to do this in guaranteed immunity? All right, <clears throat> I move along. Uh, what would have been the price of gold had J.P. not more delivered 10,000? Uh, contracts from his house account. Um, okay, let me move along here because we read that already. That's Ted's uh, assessment there that we read at the beginning. Uh, Wall Street on Parade notes that J.P. Morgan Chase holds 53% of all the monetary metals derivatives contracts in the U.S. banking system. <clears throat> so let's get this straight so we're all on the same page here. The very same company, J.P. Morgan Chase, that was convicted with criminal charges withheld in 2016 for manipulating metals markets holds 
53% of all the monetary metals. Uh, what did I say up here? What was that quote earlier here? <laughs> and when you're, asking, you're saying, well, why is the government a uh, Ponzi scheme? When, well, you know why the government's a Ponzi scheme? Because they allow this shit to happen. So does the CFTC. So does, you know, so they're all full of shit out there. Trust me on this. Uh, boy, if I get any views because of the profanity on this, I'm going to call this an R-rated video tonight. Well, anyway, let me move along here. Uh, could it be that the margin calls on its massive position or those of its customers, whoever that may be, <clears throat> maybe the government, are now so large they can no longer continue to meet them? If so, we are witnessing a substantial increase in the price of gold as a reaction to the people's need for real investment when there is an absence of sellers. Uh, I have been a long-time believer in gold as a safe haven, a store value, and a medium exchange. Uh, this belief was hard at hard times to uh, defend, blah, blah, blah. I don't mean to blah, blah, blah. Good article here. And uh, <clears throat> the mirth of both friends and enemies was quite reasonable because the price did not seem to react against the background of world instability and the madness of global currency debasement. Indeed, it's become harder and harder for me to justify my position as gold bug. Uh, and there were times when the laughter became difficult to bear. However, more than a Capricorn, all right, well, I don't think much uh, president in that, but uh, let's take a look. I am hard to shift. Uh, my only solace was that I, uh, con, con, boy, that's a word I'm not familiar with, concomitant uh, belief that, I gotta look that up, see if that's correct, uh, that there was an external agent that appeared to uh, seek an unnatural stability in the market turbulence. At first, I thought Christine Lagarde, in one of her many guises, may be a conductor of the glum requiem. After all, I was in the audience years ago at a symposium in Moscow when she announced in English that when France became chairman of the G8, current movements would be agreed with the members and commodity prices would be controlled by law. Now, follow this. That's what I've been talking about here. Commodity, Chris, Christine Lagarde talks about this, about when they're in control, when she's uh, queen of the world. Uh, commodity prices would be controlled by the law. <clears throat> You have to wonder if some degree, again, plunge protection team, if commodity prices here in the United States, whether it, you know, I'm going to say silver, we know the commodity prices in silver uh, are so manipulated, but maybe oil and other commodities are, well, maybe it is by the law. Maybe governments, plunge protection teams have been able to keep these uh, products so low in a, in a fake exchange uh, that the global world believes in and, and, and allows them to make the uh, uh, price discovery. Uh, maybe uh, 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 maybe this whole thing is just a big rig, rig, rig puppeteer show. All right, I digress. I'm going to move along here. Unsurprisingly, this never happened, but the activities of J.P. Morgan Chase in the futures market sub subsequently became an outlier as far as derivative concentration was concerned. Could this be the work of one or several central bank financial stability units? And that's exactly what I was just talking about. I guess I kind of spoiled the ending of his uh, uh, article here, and we, you know, we've been talking about the plunge protection team for years, you know, <clears throat> and and what role they have to play uh, in uh, uh, manipulating uh, commodities markets, derivative markets, and again, we talk about gold and silver, but you know, one that's even bigger and more important is the oil markets. I got to wonder how rigged the oil markets are really. You know, I wish I understood more about that. We'd probably see uh, that it's even more rigged than the silver markets. But I move along here and say. Of course, rules about bank st stability itself would normally make such a gigantic derivative concentration impossible, unless, of course, the bank's customers were undoubted or backed by physical metal. I doubt the customer is the uh, Bank of International Settlements. Uh, of course, Biz talks about, uh, I mean, Biz, GATA.org talks about Biz uh, being the uh, 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 customer or uh, one of the <clears throat> reasons that gold prices globally have been kept down. Uh, but I think what this gentleman's missing is uh, that the biz is probably run by the United States in some weird way. Uh, but I move along here and say, since it's helpful, uh, helpfully publish the details of Goldstone. Could that, could that be the U.S. Federal Gov Reserve or its associate, the Plunge Protection Team, uh, be the uh, criminals in uh, rigging the uh, gold market? Um, again, perhaps, and I think that's probably likely the case. Uh, Fort Knox probably has a lot of gold in its vault, so there's no real net short position in gold for the... <clears throat> well, I'm kind of, <laughs> I hope this guy believes that Fort Knox has a lot of gold in his vault. Well, I, I, I'm hoping that he's right, but uh, 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 I'm not quite sure about that. He who, he who has the gold makes the rules. So Uncle Sam might now be beginning to say that the market is, as so often the case, correct, and no more smoothing, please. Well, kind of interesting article here. It talks about uh, how manipulated these markets are. And really, the, you, you know, every article, whether they agree uh, that it, it is uh, J.P. Morgan or it's not J.P. Morgan, 
whose name keeps coming up when it comes to uh, market manipulation? J.P. Morgan. Well, anyways, let's uh, 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 talk about something different here, folks, which was last week's video, Buying Food with Silver and Gold. Uh, I liked that video. didn't get the views I kind of hoped to get, but uh, uh, not hoped to get. I don't hope. You know, I'm lucky I get 10 views, actually. So, and uh, thankful. I'm thankful that I get any, and I'm thankful that you folks like and hit that subscribe button and that share button as well. And uh, hit that bell here so you know when my new videos come up. <laughs> but uh, I, I am, I am. Uh, uh, I guess I'll use the word blessed. I don't use it very often. I'm blessed. I'm very thankful that, uh, of all the uh, uh, listeners that I do have out there. Uh, let's kind of let me answer a few comments. So I haven't done comments. Uh, uh, well, I have done comments here, but uh, I don't think I did them last week. Did I? Uh, newest first, and I'm going to scroll down to the very bottom here. Get uh, close your eyes if you get dizzy. Ooh, oh, a few comments there. Welco Services, what's up? Uh, Donald, uh, I know it was wrong, but I swapped a beat-up piece to offer almost use uh, MT imbalance with cost on the <laughs> Hey, have fun, man. I mean, a couple bucks. Who cares about swapping some stuff? And, you know, the underlying theme I always talk about, if you're going to buy a large amount of silver, you know, uh, buy the cheaper premium stuff. But there's nothing wrong with having fun with smaller purchases. Uh, Zane says, Brian, when I was a kid in elementary school, I sold ice cream as part of the associate. Cool, man. I, would, I sold soda pops at uh, coin conventions. It was kind of cool. I, I think I made uh, 25 cents a, a soda or something like that. Uh, I remember walking. Yeah, yeah. I was a, a little entrepreneur myself there, Zane. I hope you had a nice weekend, a uh, nice uh, holiday weekend. Uh, Silverliner says, I don't see much on here about Nixon taking us off the gold standard in 1971. Yeah, I have talked about that in the past, in past videos. My past six or 700 videos, I'm sure there's at least a dozen or more that I talk about that particular subject there. Hope you had a nice uh, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, uh, Easter week in there, uh, Silver Liner. Uh, George Mont, uh, Montgomery says FDR confiscation goal was during a time when you couldn't sue your government. A change with the HMO insurance program is a um, little deep there, but I'm going to kind of, uh, uh, for you folks, I think that's a very uh, good uh, uh, comment right there. It is something worth uh, me rereading here in a little bit. Uh, uh, thanks for bringing up uh, George Montgomery and any of you folks that want to comment here. Uh, here you go. Uh, there's a comment there by Blaze Silverstaff. Uh, we'll put six. Uh, mm, love this stuff here. Wish I had more time to discuss it. Uh, thanks, Focus. Appreciate you enjoying my video. Believe your logic on bartering for food is dated. We have to factor in new wretched CBC. What if your local grocery checkout denies your purchase due to an inadequate social credit score? F that. F that. If, if, if I have to use a CBDC that I'm going to become a bank robber and just steal my food. There you go. Give me all the, give me all the fried chicken you got, man. <laughs> Stuff it in a bag. Keep your mouth shut. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, listen, when they, force, when they force us to become criminals, guess what we're going to become? Uh, and I, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, Linda says uh, it's a morning show. Oh, man. Dude, I blew it this time, Linda. Sorry. Try to get one done this morning. Will tomorrow. Here, let me have a sip here. Hmm. Pinot Noir, by the way. And again, it's after five. I can drink it. I better make sure it's up. Yeah, it's 6.57. My gosh. I gotta grab something to eat here. Uh, Creo, the traveler, says uh, markets are closed. Yep, uh, they were closed on Friday. I was still trading. Uh, we were open for the most part. Uh, I like this new early format. I'll try to get back to it tomorrow. Portal Miner. Uh, Erotic Onion 23 says, Where do I find a stacker wife so she didn't have to? <laughs> Why don't you just find a couple stacker wives? I believe you can do that. No, uh, not, well, I was going to say Ohio and Utah, can't you? Um, metals have no, it's not yours and not your wife. Someone you can keep them under the radar. There you go, under the radar. Uh, the alt economy will accept metal and barter items, especially when the U.S. dollar fails. Gary Biggs, uh, the alt economy will accept it today. I mean, I think if I could go trade stuff for a lot of people out there that understand gold and silver, well, not a lot, but a few that do, and trade them for different things. Uh, good comment, Gary. Thank you. Appreciate that. Darren, the spiritual atheist, says, that's why I have tons of constitutional money. Good for you, sir. And Linda, um, yeah, yeah, they do come at random times, and uh, uh, think of him very often. And what else we got going on? Hmm, hyperinflation. Appreciate it. I say appreciate that a lot. <laughs> and the dollar tanks I go and sell on just to pay my rent. Yeah, that's probably going to be the idea. Uh, Christopher says, uh, when we went off the gold standard, we've been in bed with the hot air. <laughs> the dollar wake up 50 years to get Fossey the wig and glass eye on to mention non solar gravitational pulls. Uh, you always have a wonderful way of stating things, but I won't argue with that one, Chris. You're right on the uh, target there. Jason, good uh, good comment. Thank you. <laughs> Skip Walker, no worries about that. A little bit confused on that issue, but uh, uh, no worries. Uh, 
Uh, the fact that you did business with, hmm, uh, you kind of lost me there, sir. Uh, anyways, hope you're having a good weekend. Uh, people were bartering silver for 100,000 before gold was discovered, and I believe we're on track for Armageddon. Uh, I don't know, man. I wouldn't worry about it too much. If it's Armageddon, just fatten up your neighbors. That's probably your most likely food source. Uh, Michael Matthews, uh, <laughs> Christopher Lewis, uh, keep a scale, know what pieces of gold and silver should weigh. Uh, Valerie Price, yeah, true. Uh, well, no, weights won't help you either. You got to know what the uh, dimensions are and all that other stuff, uh, especially with the new modern counterfeits that you see out there. Uh, Valerie says, I'd like to see this. Nobody needs a, a crisis to buy gold and silver. But I wouldn't trust anyone to use the scare tactics. Yeah, absolutely true. Uh, it's really about storage of value, you know, insurance policy, security for borrowing. 100% yeah, there, Valerie. You, get, you nailed it. You nailed it. You nailed it. You nailed it there. Uh, Tim Gibson says, I think the easiest one to fool in Ukraine were the ones that never watched. Yep, back when it happened. I was watching that coup happen back in uh, 14. I knew exactly what was going on. Another color revolution, another failed color revolution. Uh, um, Lynette Zhang strongly speculates that pre-33 is not likely to be confiscated. Bill Holter strongly speculates that U.S. mint coins are l much less likely to be confiscated. Um, <clears throat> oh, um, no, I'm not quite sure. Uh, you know, pre strongly speculates that pre-30 are not likely to be confiscated. Um, I'm not quite sure what that means, but yeah, I'd love to debate anybody. I'm not quite sure what these folks believe, whether they believe it, you know, that uh, confiscation can happen or not happen. But I'd, I'd happily talk to anybody, uh, uh, debate anybody out there uh, on anybody, whether it's Lynette Zhang or Bill Holter or anyone. If they want to tell me that pre-33 gold coins are a better gold play uh, for buyers, a better deal for buyers uh, than buying bullion stuff, lower price bullion stuff. I'd love to debate them. Anytime, game on, you let me know. You guys want to hook that debate up? I don't care who it is, Lynette, Bill, whatever. Uh, again, I'm not sure of their positions on that, but anyone that wants to take position that pre-33 gold, you need to buy that because of confiscation and it's a better deal. They're full of shit. I'll debate them anywhere, anyplace, anytime. Jane Hayden says, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, anytime you want to bring wheelbarrow twenties, we're always welcome. We're, we're always here to take them, Jane. Thanks for commenting, and uh, thanks for coming in. I appreciate uh, uh, seeing you the other day again, uh, Brian. Although the dollars and economy may take a little long, as there's one thing folks don't seem to understand: it's backed by the grading. F <clears throat> yeah, I, I, you know, gold, sh gold, money should be backed not by force or threat. Gold, uh, money should be backed by peaceful trade amongst individuals, not by force or threat. So I, I got a little problem with that comment, but I, I know it's exactly what you're saying that, that uh, you know, um, you know I, I think we do have one of the greatest fighting forces out there, uh, but I got to wonder, you know, this uh, fighting force has become very woke uh, and that concerns me, but that's a whole different subject. Rick, hope you're having, I hope you had a great uh, 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 th uh, Thanksgiving, uh, Thanksgiving, Easter weekend. Uh, Richard, what's up, man? Oh my gosh, subscribe after you. Uh, uh, Brian said, more likely to eat your neighbor before using some silver. <laughs> it's true, though, man. It's true. It's true. What can I say? Are we the baddies? I don't know. It depends on what baddies are. I might, uh, might agree with you that we might be, but not really. Who are the baddies? It's the Ponzi guys, the Ponzi scheme people, the government. The government are the baddies, unless you think baddies are a good thing, and then uh, maybe not. <laughs> Well, all right, I'm getting tired. I got to eat something here. Spin Cycle says, if you want any of my uh, stuff, I won't accept fiat, period. Well, how are you buying food, man? You got to buy food with fiat. You got to trade something in for your fiat. But I guess if you're getting paid in fiat, trade that for your food. Hang on to your gold and silver. When uh, they don't take fiat anymore, or when fiat gets much, much uh, cheaper and you, you want to buy more food, crack out the silver, buy more fiat, buy more food. Uh, boy, that sounds too simple. Uh, if you're worried about Armageddon and the dollar crash, and forget gold and silver, buy guns and ammo. Um, I'm not a big gun and ammo uh, person. You know, the problem is, is that you can't eat guns and ammo, and that, uh, um, you know, <clears throat> what are you going to do with it, really? What are you going to, I mean, in an, urban, in an urban city type of environment, if you live in the country, great. Maybe you can hunt and survive for a certain amount of time with that. But uh, uh, if you live in an urban environment, you know, all the ammo in the world ain't going to help you. I mean, what are they going to come and steal from you? You know what I mean? If you got tons of food, then maybe that's what they're coming to get. But uh, uh, likely you'll be like everyone else, sitting there just looking at your ammo and guns and wondering where you're going to get your next piece of bread from. Uh, pre appreciate your comments, Bonfire. That's why I keep telling you, stack more silver and gold because 
we're always going to have fiat currency. It's just going to take a lot more of that fiat to buy the same amount of products that we're used to now and have been used to. Coin collecting is fun, is absolutely correct. Coin collecting is a blast. If you, if you like coin collecting, make sure you come visit us at Commercial Rare Coins because a lot, I talk about bullion all the time, but we are coin nerds here as well. Uh, thanks for hitting that uh, like button. Coin collecting is fun. Uh, like that name as well. Listen, I'm going to call it quits. Long day. If you don't ever find me on YouTube, it's because I said something stupid or said something too many times. <laughs> and you'll find me on this particular channel. And we back up everything over here just in case. And again, I like this free speech forum here. Uh, that is uh, uh, the R-U-M-B-L-E channel. Uh, also, uh, you can catch me out here since Elon Musk uh, uh, started to own it. And I think it's more of a free speech platform. I've been posting more out here as well. You can ask me questions anytime you like. Uh, uh, you can reach me by my name right here, Brian Kuzmar, um, at briankuzmar.com on Twitter. And uh, you can also reach me on the ancient, I, I was told only old people go on LinkedIn, but here I am. I'm on LinkedIn as Brian Kuzmar as well. Welcome, Brian. They always welcome me here. <laughs> All right, that's it. If you're looking to buy gold, silver, and platinum, uh, premiums are up across the board on gold and silver products. Uh, not substantially, but still up. Uh, there's delays in almost all silver products when it comes to the one-ounce sizes. Uh, if you're looking to buy any types of gold, silver, and platinum, you live in South Florida, and uh, 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 you're looking for good precious metal dealers, I'll beat the locals down here on any of the reasonable price products. So, and you say to yourself, well, why do I even need to go to my local dealer? You know why? If you live in South Florida, you know why you need to come to me, see me? Because I'll still be at Max, SD, and J, and Bullion on their reasonably priced products that they uh, have online. And I can beat them quite substantially on uh, uh, some stuff as well. Uh, if you don't live in South Florida and uh, you want to purchase from us, unfortunately, we don't have a website that you can order stuff on, folks. We do traditional forms of bank wires and traditional forms of shipping. Uh, but if you're looking to buy more than uh, 1,500 ounces of silver uh, and more than 100 ounces of gold, we can help you out using bank wires and, uh, again, traditional forms of payment. Happy to do that for you. Uh, but if, uh, again, if, you, if you're not buying that much, you don't live in South Florida and you can't deal with us directly at our brick and mortar store here, please, 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 before you go to Atmex, SD, and JM, which are great companies, see if you can find yourself a good local dealer. Try to keep that money local. I highly recommend you do that. And uh, that's really it. Hey, listen, one other thing. Lakeland Collectorama Show is coming up uh, June 22nd to June 24th. If you live in South Florida and you want to have a, you know, a cool little fun trip, uh, it's, you know, it's only an hour or so from uh, uh, Tampa, it's only an hour or so from Atlanta, a couple hours from Jacksonville, you know, three or four hours from Miami, I'm down in that area. Uh, uh, so it's a fun little show. Uh, you can get your free tickets here. Uh, it's, I think it starts on like uh, Thursday, Friday, and ends on Saturday about 3 p.m. Uh, but uh, you can buy gold, silver, platinum, all kinds of really cool products and uh, hope to see you there. Uh, anyway, that's it, folks. Have yourself a wonderful day and uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye now.